Okay, so what do you think? My premise is that all throughout history and all things, the pendulum slings one way, and then it maxes out its momentum, it halts, and then it starts swinging the other direction. Uh, photography, unfortunately, has been overrun by uh, the measure baiters and uh, all the assholes that think about nothing other than resolution. Not that we, uh, any of us, enjoy lenses uh, that are not that sharp, but there are, are a lot more things to lenses than resolution. I, I got done taking this lens apart the other day. I've got several of these. This one was uh, frozen up. This one actually happens to be a rare version of that. It's a, uh, a red T, and it has the uh, circled uh, 0 over 1, meaning it's their highest quality mark. Uh, this is uh, meant for European and USA market. It's uh, 64 years old, this particular lens. It's an M42 mount. Now, I have that mounted on the X-T2. So this is a 66-year-old lens mounted on a 2016 body, the Fuji X-T2. Not an extremely fast lens. And it's just as, after I got done with it, it's as good as the day it was made. It makes the most beautiful images with soap bubble bokeh that would just melt your heart. And the micro contrasts and uh, the color saturation, this is a four element lens. Four. Four damn elements. You know, yeah, it's a manual focus lens. It's really tiny. Oh, it's not that fast. It's a 50 millimeter. It's only 3.5. So damn what? So what, damn it? You know, lenses today, they don't have this sort of output. Yeah, but it's a manual focus lens and it's slow. So damn what? I want to point you to something. Now, these are only test shots of the bokeh. I want to ask you what sort of lens that you've got made by Canon, Nikon, or Fuji today that makes soap bubble bokeh like that. People go, people see that and they go, oh my god, I want to own a lens like that. Where can I get it? It's like, well, you have to buy old obsolete lenses that are usually kind of full of dust and. You know, they're, they haven't been made anymore. Not only that, you know, these really awesome lenses, some of them are made in the uh, Deutsche Demokratische Republik, German, East Germany. Okay? That's an easy way to say it. Communist Germany. That's actually the unpolitically correct way of saying commie Germany. That's what we used to say back in the day. We say West Germany and commie Germany. And uh, commie Germany did not have fine German quality. No, because when communists take care of crap, everything they roll out is crap. Let me know. I lived in Russia for quite a long time. I know about communist quality. Okay, Communists uh, don't exactly produce. Yet this lens is incredible. Okay, But that's... Communists are also very, very famous for stealing stuff, so they stole this idea from prior lenses, so even then it's not a communist lens. It is a communist copy of something that was superior made by Westerners. <laughs> Jawohl! Jawohl, mein Freund! Mein Freund. Um, Schweinhund! Amerikanisch Schweinhund! <laughs> There's going to be a revolution in photography, and my optic girl... I'm going to make a prediction. I am so good at making predictions that come true. I am really good at prognosticating the future. And no, it's not like I'm rubbing on crystals and like mind-melding my consciousness into the future. It's I can always see the winds and tides of things, and uh, I'm right an extremely high majority of the time. Uh, just, just damn. I can sniff the winds of the way things blow. And things have swung too far. We have lost sight the photography. Photographia is an art form. And uh, if you want to do reproduction work where high resolution is incredibly important, that's fine. But you know what? <laughs> photography is not about high resolution crap. It's like, look, here's a high resolution snapshot of Bob standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Uh, that's a nice. How about something that actually moves the human soul that is unique? People, you know, I'm not the person that invented the term micro contrast. There's bandwidth, there's phase. Uh, I've actually come up with a six point system of judging lenses uh, RPG, BCD, resolution, phase gain, uh, bandwidth, uh, construction, and drive. Obviously, this lens has no drive. The drive is manual focus a la fingers. 
construction, however, is exquisite. Taking this lens apart was a dream. You know what? Simplicity is divinity. I mean, this thing had two screws in the back, and then underneath that there was one screw to uh, take the two main pieces of the body apart and uh, re-grease them. Man, talk about simplicity. I mean, Helen Keller. I could have told Helen Keller how to fix this lens. It's so simple. These these new lenses, no. It's like, yeah, but they're really fast autofocus, and they got great corner to corner, low chromatic aberration, or almost no chromatic. Isn't that wonderful? And you know what they look like? They look like hamburger. They they just the hamburger the image. This this has something special in it, something magical. This is a boring shot, but I'm talking about the way it actually renders the light, renders the out of focus details. This has something magical. I can't get that in anything Canon or Canon, Nikon or Canon or Fuji uh, make. I can't even get this shit out of Zeiss either. I can't even get this shit out of anything the Voigtlander makes. I can't. Now, my optic Gerlitz, it turns out that there is a huge revolution going on, and there are my optic Gerlitz are the only people that have wised the F up and realized, you know, people kind of like these lenses that make magic bokeh, and they're like, they really color rich, and they actually have true perceptual depth and micro contrast in them. Right now, they're making a three element lens, a new lens, and a, but the problem is their prices are insanely high. Insanely high. They're upwards of $2,000. No, not, not for a triplet lens with three elements in it. That's, that's no good. Now, that, that's some serious good profits for them, but it's only got three elements in it, you know? I'm sorry, but that manual focus lens with only three elements, you should not be selling that lens for $2,000. But because demand is insanely high and supply is insanely low, Meyer Optic Gerlitz right now is effing the world. I'm not actually writing Meyer Optic Gerlitz for doing it, but Meyer Optic Gerlitz is right now is like, we got enormous demand and there is jack shit for supply and we are going to charge through the roof for this lens because Nikon ain't going to do it, Fuji ain't going to do it. Nobody else is going to do it, but we're going to do it. But we're going to charge a premium for it. And people don't give a shit. They are buying and pre-ordering the lens. Now, even Petapixel had an article about... They did a uh, um, a uh, GoFundMe thing for the new lens. And they got, like, what was it? Four times their uh, estimated uh, goal. People were like, I got to have it. There will be a point in time in the very near future when Nikon and Fuji, because it's all about the money, you know, when they see, holy shit, Meyer Optic Gerlitz is selling the piss out of this lens that is not very sharp. It has some significant, well, not significant, it has decent vignetting, and it's only got three elements in it. Nikon, there should be some head honchos at Nikon Incorporated that go, we can make this shit. <laughs> Even if you made it out of plastic, I wouldn't give a damn. Just make it. You know, hopefully you'd make it in Japan out of metal, but we all know that Nikon has uh, now got a uh, hard-on love affair for polycarbonate and plastic. You know? You know, Nikon still makes a few manual focus lenses. You know, I was even talking to the Nikon rep today about that. Not that he really gives a damn. You know, he's a representative for Nikon. He can't do anything at Nikon. I mean, bless his heart. But Nikon and the and, and these other companies, they're missing out. Meyer Optic Gerlitz is giving the middle finger to everybody because the demand for those lenses is... Ins if people knew, if they actually had even any advertising, their demand already is insanely high. But if they had even one ounce of advertising and people could see what the hell those lenses do... That they're asking 2000 way too much money for a three-element lens. Way too damn much. But if people could see what it does, they would it would just be an avalanche. Just like, I gotta have it. Nikon and some of these other people are gonna jump on the bandwagon. Now, Nikon, for example, has jumped on the bandwagon and tried to screw over GoPro. You know, it's like, Nikon's like, we're gonna get into the GoPro business. We're gonna start making this funky crap, you know, that's gonna, like, knock off GoPro. And it's the key mission, you know? Here it is. There's three of these horrible little pissy cameras 
which are an attempt to destroy GoPro. Nikon's, Nikon was like, we want some of that market right there. We want the GoPro market. We're going to get a slice of that pie. Cha-ching, cha-ching. These are going to go over like lead balloons. Nikon should realize, since Nikon has these neat little things called billion-dollar optical factories where they can make shit, Nikon's going to go, you know that company Meyer Optic Gurlitz? Well, right now they are selling the piss crap out of a three-element lens. And then be some people at Nikon are going to go, you know, we should get on that train. You know, it seems like there's some significant money in there. We could make this lens easy, man. It's only got three damn elements in it. It is based off of a 133-year-old lens design, a Cook triplet. Three frigging elements. Nikon would be like, we're going to get us some of that. Nikon, you want to make some money? Jump on that bandwagon that Meyer Optic Gerlitz is on right now. They're selling the piss out of a manual focus three element lens and they're selling it at an astronomically high price and people are still buying the dog poop out of it. Because, 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 because Nikon doesn't have this crap. Fuji doesn't have it. Canon doesn't have it. Sony doesn't have it. Well, Sony's not a real camera company. <sighs> I'm going to make a prediction right now of the future, and that is the future prediction. In the very near future, someone's going to wake up at Nikon or somewhere, and they're going to be like, man, you know, we're going to jump on this bandwagon. And there'll be a revolution. Photography will start to rediscover its roots. And some of the autofocus pusswads out there are going to go like, you know, I got no problem manually focusing on a tree because trees don't move. You know? It's like, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to, I'm going to manually focus that in. Yeah! There's real photography. Not everything has to be tracking squirrels on crack at insane autofocus speeds with super advanced autofocus tracking cameras. How about a traditional lens that is truly artful? Not the, not the crap that Sigma puts out that they call art, but I mean a real art lens. Thanks for watching. Bye.